Hey, it's Patrick, and today I'm gonna to show you how to put a camshaft in your Milwaukee 8 powered Harley Davidson. Now, why would you wanna do that? The two main reasons are horsepower and torque. As luck would have it, Milwaukee 8 engines respond very well camshaft changes, those four valve heads really get to working when you change those cams. But if you're gonna do that, you need to have a couple of things either done beforehand or change them when you change the camshaft. And that is you need a performance exhaust, you need a performance intake, and a tuner. If you don't have those things, you're not gonna get the full benefit of that cam swap. We are using a 2019 Softail Fat Bob, and we've actually done a bunch of stuff to this bike and made videos throughout the entire process. We've turned our bike into a 131-inch fire-breathing monster. We've done videos on crankshaft installations, big bores, cylinder heads, and even driveline upgrades. And you can check all those out if you further wish to modify your bike. All Milwaukee 8 powered machines are gonna be the same as far as this camshaft installation goes. So if you have a Softail or a Bagger, it's the same work. We're starting with our camshaft already apart. If you wanna know how to get there, we've made a disassembly video. You can check that out to get you to this part. Now, as far as what tools you're gonna to need, a basic set of hand tools, along with a cam bearing remover and installer tool, a set of bolt cutters, and you're gonna need a flat jack to get that back wheel off the ground, and of course, a torque wrench. Okay, before we can install our cam, we need to make sure all of our O-rings are out of here. We're gonna replace those. I actually missed one in here. And then we have to replace that cam bearing, which is what you need the special tool for, this Jim's tool. And we'll take that one out and we'll also press the new one in. So right now we're getting ready to take this one out and I have the tool assembled so you can kind of see what it looks like here. First of all, the plate, you wanna be able to read remove. This is how the plate needs to be installed to remove it. You have the little collar here and basically you can see how it's kind of fluted there. This is just gonna get pushed through that bearing so then it can grab a hold of it and pull it back out. This rod's gonna go in the middle and then there is a brass washer and a nut. Just a couple little thumb screws that we're gonna mount this on here with. But other than that, that's the tool to remove the bearing. I'm gonna make sure this rod is out of here for this part of this. Then we're gonna take this, put it in the bearing, and just tap it in there like that. Give it a little tug, make sure it's grabbing onto that bearing, and we're in good shape. So now we wanna put our plate on here so we can read the remove part and it slips through this non-threaded hole. And that should line up with holes to put your little thumb screws in. The holes are actually marked with R's for remove and I for install. So now all of our R holes are lined up. Put these thumb screws in here. Just finger tight on these is gonna be great. Next, I'm gonna slip the rod back in here and it should stick out about a half, maybe a quarter. That's perfect. Brass washer goes over the top and then our nut goes on. So we're going to hold on to our tool. We're gonna to turn the nut. And it'll start to pull that bearing out of there. Okay, to install the new bearing, we've got our plate so we can read install. Remove is now upside down. We're gonna take our threaded rod, put it through the threaded hole. You wanna thread it through there an inch or so. We're gonna need to use some of these threads. Again, it doesn't hurt. Put a little bit of oil on these threads to make sure everything goes nice and smooth. Once we get it through there a ways, we're gonna take this little piece here. It's threaded and it's got an O-ring on the top. We're gonna thread that on. Doesn't need to be super tight. Just thread it till it bottoms out. Next, this tool is gonna to go down just like that so the shouldered side is in towards the tool and this side is going into the engine. We need to make sure the little lettered side on the bearing goes down on the tube. We're gonna get this lined up and get our thumb screws in there. We'll drive our bearing in. I run this down by hand just to make sure everything's lined up before I start pressing it in there. Okay. 
Okay, now we're ready to start assembling our cam chest. As you can see, I don't have any lifters in here. I don't have the tappet blocks on. If you're doing this job, um, just doing a cam job, you can go ahead and bolt cutter those out and you're probably gonna have your tappet blocks in here. Now, as long as you just brace your lifters up so they're up out of the way of the cam, you can do this without having to disassemble the tappet blocks and everything. We did because we did the complete engine build. Now we're back to this point. Now, first thing we need to do is put a new O-ring way down here where the oil pump's gonna go in. A Couple of things, there's two O-rings, one here, one here. The one we're putting on for the oil pump is the thicker of the two and don't put it on the pump and put it in there. Put it in the case first, put a little bit of oil on it, slide it in there. Next, there's two ways to put this pump on. You can take it fully assembled and slide it in there, which is fine as long as you give a little inspection first. I actually like to do them in two pieces, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna split this pump apart. All you need to know with the little rotors that are in here, this one in the inside has a relief cut and that goes towards the engine. So I'll put this in here like that. You wanna make sure there's two dowels, one here and one here, mine's the other side of the pump. We're gonna take that plate off, lube that up, and we'll put that part of the pump on second. These two flat pieces on this rotor there and there go over the flat sides of the crankshaft. See how that clicked in there? You wanna make sure that oil pump snaps into that O-ring really positively. So I'm gonna pull this plate off, make sure we don't wanna lose our other dowel pin that's right here. I like to check and make sure the clip that's holding the screen is in there nice, ours is fine. Then I'm gonna lube up the rotors here. Could be easier to put the dowel pins and the plate in the cam chest, then slide the rest of the pump on. So the last thing we need to check is we need to make sure our pump's not sticking out too far. Take a straight edge, put it across these two castings here, and make sure that pump isn't pushed out any farther than that. If it is, you probably don't have something all the way on in there. Okay, next we have one more O-ring, the thinner of the two O-rings that came with the kit. We're gonna put it right in here before we put the cam plate on. Before we lube the cam up and slide it into the bearing, put the cam in there and spin it over a few times by hand to make sure that lobe on the inside clears all the castings. If you're putting a big cam in there, you might actually have to clearance some of that out. Next, we're gonna make sure the cam and the cam plate are both cleaned off. We're gonna lube up the end of the cam, slide it right into our new bearing. Then we can take the cam plate and just slide it on there. And we're going to slide our four oil pump screws, the long ones with the little washers on them. We're gonna slide them in there with some thread locker and just leave them kind of loose. Next, we'll put some thread locker on our six cam plate screws and we'll run those down just finger tight. We need to make sure the flat part of our crankshaft is facing up. Then we're gonna torque our six cam plate bolts anywhere from 90 to 120 foot pounds in the order that's shown on the plate. SNS is nice enough to go ahead and put the order right on the plate. After we do that, we're gonna rotate the motor over two complete rotations using the rear wheel. We're gonna put it in high gear, rotate it over two times, that flat part will still be facing up, and then we will torque the four oil pump bolts anywhere from 90 to 120 inch pounds. Since we're using gear drive cams, we have to block off the location where our hydraulic tensioner would go. SNS sends these little block off plate with the kit. We're going to put some blue thread locker on these. You're gonna need a T27 Torx. We're gonna to put the plate on here and torque it to 120 inch pounds. We're gonna put our pinion gear on the pinion shaft. 
your flat part of your chef should still be facing up. You're going to need to reuse the washer that was on the old chain drive setup, but SNS sends a new bolt. We're gonna slide that gear on there. Should be a pretty snug fit. We're gonna hit the bolt with some red Loctite and torque it to 24 foot pounds. Should be able to hold the rear wheel and torque this to 24 foot pounds. Okay, now we are going to put our big gear on to our cam. Couple of things here. This gear is actually for twin cams or for Milwaukee 8s. The other side says out for twin cam, so we're gonna go out for M8. This is also a keyway installation. So it comes with a tiny little keyway. We're going to slide that into the groove on the cam, and then we're going to put the gear on top of that. Now, you wanna make sure the keyway groove is up and your bottom gear has the dot facing up because what that's gonna do is gonna line all of this up. When you put the keyway on, you want the dot on your top gear to be directly lined up with the top on the pinion gear. We're gonna torque this to 35 pounds. Don't jam these gears, you don't wanna do that. What SNS recommends is putting some weight on the bike and then having someone or yourself press on the rear brake while you torque this. There we go. Now we need to check our gears for the proper backlash. And basically what that means is the amount of play in between them. It's not, it's gonna be very, very slight. How you do this is use a dial indicator and you get it set up and zeroed out and you want it to be anywhere from 0.005 to 0.002. And if it's any tighter than 0005 or 002, then you're either gonna need a smaller or bigger pinion gear. And they want you to check this basically in four spots. I will tell you this, I have yet to see one of these that was like out of spec. SNS has pretty good manufacturing process and things are normally right on where they're supposed to be. All right, now we're going to install our tappets or lifters. And basically, we're just gonna drop those in. It's always a good idea to pre-soak those in oil and make sure the wheel on the tappet is going this way. After that, we're going to install the SNS tappet cuffs because the plastic piece that's factory is pretty chintzy. When we do that, when we tighten it down, we're gonna put a little blue thread locker on the bolt, tighten it to 100 inch pounds. But as we do that, we're gonna slide a .002 feeler gauge down next to it as you tighten it up, make sure things are held just perfectly. Now's a good time to turn the engine over to make sure nothing is in a bind before you put the tappet block covers on. After that, we're gonna put our tappet blocks and new gaskets on there and torque those to 140 inch pounds. All right, now we need to get our push rods in, our push rod tubes in, and get everything adjusted. But we need to do that in kind of a specific order. Whichever cylinder we're working with, we want that cylinder to be on the base circle of the cam, meaning that's the part of the cam where there's no lift happening. Because we want to set our push rods in the middle of our lifter stroke. We don't want there to be any interference with cam lift. So what we're going to do is we're gonna turn the rear wheel over, which is gonna turn the motor over. We want the cylinder that we're working with, in this case, our rear cylinder, we want those lifters to be down. How you know it's on the base circle is they're gonna be all the way down, and these two lifters on the other cylinder are going to be moving together. So we're gonna start working on our rear cylinder, but it's important to know to start with the push rod that's closest to the cylinder. You start with the one that's out front, you're gonna block yourself from working on the one that's closest to the rear cylinder. 
With the Quickie Push Rod Kit, it comes with the covers for it because your stock ones won't collapse up far enough for you to get them in there. Three O-rings. The thickest one goes up into the cylinder head. You want to make sure that's in there. If you forget one of these, you're going to have all kinds of leaks. There's going to be a wider, thinner one. That one goes down into the tappet block cover. We're going to take our aluminum tube, slide it down through the collar with a little hat piece at the top. The spring from your stock push rod tubes, we're going to reuse that, drop it into the collar. And there is a thin washer that comes with that. We're going to drop that on. Our remaining O-ring now gets slid over the top. From there, we're going to slide this whole assembly into our push rod tube. It goes into the top of the tube that's flared out there. That's where that O-ring is going to seal. From there, we take our push rod. We're going to slide it inside. They need to make sure that the push rod is unthreaded and completely collapsed in its shortest version. From there, we're going to slide all of this into the engine. We do that, you need to make sure that you hit that rocker arm cup that's up there and then slide it into the rear tappet block and then we're going to thread it down. Hold that, that bottom lock nut that's loose. You want to make sure you hold on to that. If you drop it down, you're not going to be able to reach it. You won't lose it, but you just have to start over again. We're going to thread this until it's zero lash, meaning we're going to thread this push rod down so there's no more up and down slack. Once we get that slack out of there, we can hook our tube up out of the way and start with the actual adjustment. We're going to adjust it down a hundred thousandths, which puts it in the middle of our lifter's stroke. And to do that, we're going to make three and a half turns. We're gonna use a 7 16 up here and a quarter inch down here. We're gonna keep running that adjustment down into the lifter, 100 thousandths, which is 20 flats, which means that's 20 flat sides of the nut, or three and a half turns. Now, depending on your lifter or push rod setup, that could be different. This is a 32 threads per inch push, quickie push rod from SNS, and with a stock lifter or an SNS lifter, that's how many turns we want to move it down there. If you're using something else like a short stroke lifter, could be different and follow your instructions, but the process is going to be the same. Before we can move to the next cylinder, we need to be able to spin these with our fingers. They're going to have pressure on them from the valve springs because it's going to bleed them down as we're tightening them. We want to make sure we can move those with our fingers before we go to the next cylinder, put it on the base circle, and start our adjustment. Okay, now that our adjustment's done, everything is bled down, we're gonna turn the motor over just to make sure everything is working properly and not binding up. And then I'll show you how to finish up the push rod tube covers. So the first thing I'm gonna do is push the bottom of this tube down and make sure it's seated all the way down in the O-ring down there. As you can see, the O-ring is dropped back down on there. So we wanna make sure that gets seated all the way at the top. We're gonna put the top of the clip in. There's a little notch in there. You can get a screwdriver in and help push down the collar. Just make sure you don't slip off and scratch the life out of your push rods. Last up, put our cam cover back on, put some blue thread locker on our screws, throw a fresh gasket in there. We're gonna tighten it up in the sequence that the factory wants us to. We're gonna torque them to 120 inch pounds. Hey 
And there we have a fresh camshaft in our Milwaukee 8 engine making all kinds of the horse torques. And if you like what you see here, like I mentioned before, we have a complete series on all the things we did to our 131 inch engine on our Milwaukee 8 powered soft tail. If you have more questions about the cams, feel free to hit the info tab on your desktop or mobile device. That's gonna take you to the product detail page where you can read specifications and other writers' reviews. If you still have more questions, feel free to reach out to our customer service team. They would love to talk to you about what works best for your motorcycle, your riding style, and your budget. I'm Patrick, thank you for watching. Go work on those motorcycles.